Hello, today we have the pleasure to present the production of low sulfur gasoline using hydrodesulfurization. This presentation encompasses the objective, the process description, the market analysis, the process flow diagram, the process controls, the environmental and safety concerns, and the economic analysis. Our objective is to produce or design rather a hydrotreating unit which is going to lower the content of sulfur in the FCC uh, gasoline feedstock which comes from the FCC unit. Our goal is to produce around 40,000 barrels per day and post treat this gasoline at temperatures of 250 degrees Celsius and pressures of 80 ATM by using aluminum oxide um, catalyst. This is all done to meet the environmental regulations which are dictated to be 10 ppm for the sulfur concentration specification. And our plant is uh, supposed to be located in Houston, Texas, as seen in the map. Looking into the cost of reducing the sulfur content, it averages at a cost of 75% uh, of a penny. Now, operating 8,000 8, hours at 0.075 cents will come out to a price of $100,000 per annually, which is a small portion of the annual income of the refinery. This, will be, uh, this reduction will be needed to be um, completed by 2030. Next. Now looking at the uh, market analysis of gasoline annually to 2019, there's a positive trend of um, increasing prices of uh, million dollars, million barrels per day produced in the United States over Canada, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, and Russia. Also, U.S. is exporting 11,000 barrels per day, which is a good, um, there is a profit to be made in the United States. Next. Uh, why this is important, there's a uh, rising health con concern in the emissions produced by sulfur emission. Looking into the future, if this is done properly, there will be a reduction of over 50,000 res respiratory illnesses in children in the United States by 2030. This will also prevent 2,000 premature deaths and 2,200 um, asthma attacks. This is important. Uh, this is why this uh, reduction in uh, sulfur content needs to be done. And it also is expected to provide $13 in health benefit reductions per dollar of, uh, of uh, clean gasoline. So moving on to the process description, we're gonna start first with the feedstock, which is gasoline coming from the FCC unit being mixed with the hydrogen gas, which is mostly will come from a refinery, a steam refine, refine, ref, ref, reforming process. In order to prepare for the next step, which is the reactor, the feedstock will be heated and then moved to the reactor, which is a fixed bit reactor, where the hydrodesulfurization uh, reaction will take place as seen in the right hand side. After that, the reactor product will transfer to the phase separation process where the liquid will be, uh, will, will be, will be exiting from the bottom of the separator and the gas will be lifted from the top of the separator. Uh, the gas will contain mostly hydrogen gas and H2S gas produced during the process. Uh, the hydrogen gas and the H2S will be moved, uh, will, the hydrogen gas will be recycled back to the feed, but before that, we have the fourth step, which is the amine uh, unit, which is, will be used in order to remove the uh, H2S uh, gas from the hydrogen. After that, the liquid product will move to the stripper where it goes to a further separation uh, the overhead will contain mostly uh, hydrocarbon, uh, hydrogen, and H2S. Uh, it goes to the reflexing drum. In the reflexing drum, a sour water and a sour gas will exit, while the reflex, which is mostly the light hydrocarbons, will go back to the stripper. Uh, the bottom of the stripper, the product, will be uh, the low sulfur gasoline. So now moving on to the process flow diagram, we'll see that we contain the FCC gasoline going through pumps, 100, and then from this pump is gonna go to a furnace to heat up. Then it encounters the fixed bed reactor and then a 
cooler in which uh, it's gonna cool down the, the temperature of the stream to go into the gas phase separator. The top of the gas separator is gonna go through the amine scrubber, which then um, encompasses, uh, encounters a compressor to um, uh, deal with the pressure rise uh, stream Whereas the bottoms are gonna go through the pump into a heat exchanger to then go through this to the stripper. The tops of the stripper is gonna go through the reflux drum to produce the star gas, and then the bottoms are gonna contain our desulfurized gasoline, not before encountering a reboiler to keep refluxing the streams. Now on the process control, we have critical control variables which are temperature and pressure for reactor, level and temperature for the gas separator, pressure level and temperature for the stripping column, and pressure and level for the mean scrubber. Mainly the key manipulated variables are going to be the flow rates of fuel gas or flow rate of cool water, or the products that are going into the, uh, in each unit. And importantly, we have the duty of the reboiler for controlling the, um, level and the temperature of the stripping column. This is our PNID diagram as seen here. We have level controls for the reactor and also temperature control which are regulated with valve number three and the level with valve number one. We see that the mean scrubber has also level and, and pressure controllers especially due to the compressor. The gas phase separator, we are controlling the level and we're controlling the temperature as well. Whereas the stripping column in the end here, we can see that we're controlling the temperature, pressure and, and um, level. This is important because the stripping column is the most complex unit in our process and therefore it requires um, control of these three variables for the process to be safe and economically feasible. Now let's move on to environmental and safety concerns. So environmental and safety concerns. And in this process, we have seven, seven uh, chemicals, gasoline, hydrogen gas, hydrogen sulfide, catalyst, amine, sour gas, and uh, sour water. But our main focus will be the first five chemicals. Next, please. So we're gonna start first with the gasoline, hydrogen gas, and hydrogen sulfide. As we can see over here, gasoline is uh, identified as extremely flammable liquid and, and vapor, while hydrogen is considered very, very uh, extremely flammable gas. And hydrogen sulfide is considered the most hazardous and flammable gas among all of the gases. Uh, it's very dangerous as it's colorless and it can be notified by its smell, but not the smell cannot be relied on the smell always because sometimes you can't smell it, but it's there in the environment. And uh, as we can see in the table, we have the uh, exposure limit. So for the gasoline, the short term exposure limit is 500 BBM for 15 minutes. While hydrogen sulfide, we have a total weight average for, uh, for the eight hour shift is 10 BBM. And the acceptable ceiling concent concentration is, is 20 BBM. The acceptable maximum peak above the acceptable ceiling concentration for eight hour shift is 50 BBM for 10, bi 10 minutes per day. And as we can see over here, we have the recommendations, which is uh, materials that can be avoided in order to avoid any incompatibility in the, uh, with, the, with these chemicals. And we have the extinguishing media used in case there is a fire. And for the hydrogen sulfide, in, the, in the case there is a leakage, it's, since it's considered very dangerous, uh, e evacuation and shutdown are required immediately. So over here we have the catalyst, which is the alum uh, aluminum oxide catalyst. It's considered toxic vapor because it, it might accumulate in the head space of the packaging, causing some breathing problems. So approval self-contained uh, breathing apparatus are required. And over here we can see the media extinguishing for uh, in case there is a fire caused by the catalyst. So now moving on to the environmental and safety concerns. It is required for this process to wear personal protective equipment, Operators should always understand the proper conditions, timely maintenance, uh, checking for corrosion, corrosion, given that we're dealing with chemicals that may corrode our unit operations. Also, the operators should properly understand the process conditions and try not to go over or under the required um, limits. Uh, we should have safety valves because um, in case there are any flaws in the process, 
and also the high level noise safety, given that we, it can disrupt our ears if we're exposed to very high decibels. So for the economic analysis, uh, we ca first calculated the ISBL and we came up with a, uh, after calculations, to about $100 million. And this includes the fixed cost and the installation cost uh, and the OSBL and the engineering cost and the contingency and the working capital. They were all estimated as a percentage of the ISBL. And we get the total fixed co capital cost. And um, then using the plant life and the interest rate, we can obtain the total annual capital charge, which came out to $33 million per year. So this ISBL uh, bar graph shows the uh, distribution of the ISBL cost across our equipment. Uh, this includes the amine scrubber, the compressor, the separators, and the heat uh, exchangers, as, as well as the reactors. And we can see the compressors have the highest uh, cost in the ISBL. So, um, we, all, we then calculated the operating cost, which came out to $13 million per year. And this includes all the utilities that we use in the process, as well as the workers' compensation. Uh, we did not take into account the uh, vacation days, and uh, we assumed a three, days, three shifts per day with five workers per shift. And this came out to approximately $0.75 million per year. And we got a total of $13 million per year for the operating cost. And then using the uh, prices of, of premium gasoline in the modern day, we get an approximate uh, $2.50 per gallon. And since we are producing 70,000 gallons of uh, desulfurized gas per hour, uh, we get a gasoline revenue of $1.4 billion per year. And here we can see that the raw materials uh, contribute the largest amount of cost for our variable cost of production. And the utilities are a only a small portion. Uh, and the consumables, which include the catalyst, is uh, negligible in our variable costs. And here we can see the operating labor, the supervision, the direct salary overhead, as well as the maintenance and the property taxes, as well as the cost of land. Uh, maintenance being the highest cost uh, for our equipment. And uh, during the 20 year plant life, the NPV value increases. Um, so in the first two years, we are running on no profits. However, as you can see, after the third year, we uh, increase our profits ex uh, linearly until the 20th year with the plant shutdown. And here we can see the sensitivity analysis for the material cost and the product price. We see that the product price is more sensitive to our NPV value than the raw materials. So therefore we should make sure that the product price um, is calculated very accurately. And here we can see the fixed cost and the utility. Um, we can see that the fixed cost needs to be uh, calculated more accurately because it's more sensitive to this than the utilities. And finally, the ISBL and the OSBL, they are both, they're sensitive, um, they're both very sensitive in this uh, process because the OSBL was approximated as part of the ISBL. And uh, we, we should take all measures to make sure that the ISBL is uh, very accurate. Finally, for the economic summary, we can see that after 10 years, we obtained $2.7 billion. And after 20 years, $3.9 billion. So it was a very profitable process. And we got our money back after four months. And yes. So for the recommendations for this process, it is required to take further separation, such as the adibutinizer column, to achieve the gasoline to have 10 ppm. And also the sour water could be sold to companies so that they, it could be reused and it does not go to waste. And here is our references, or some of them, that we used for this um, presentation and this project. Thank you very much for your attention and have a nice day.